so I just was trying to think up a name one day and I just thought up this incredibly long, hard to remember name that you couldn't tell what the hell it was all about. Maybe that's why I'm so interested in really abnormal stuff is because I am so normal. I have a very boring life at home, actually. Kind of sit around, drink beer a lot, watch TV. You know, the stuff that I do is, is very um, psychedelic, really, almost. I mean, in a sense that it, you know, I'm usually trying to take your mind in whatever state of consciousness you're in and put it over somewhere else, you know, and, and, and this album, as you listen to it, you, you know, your, your, your sort of awareness goes around all these different places. You, you see things through the eyes of people who, who have, you know, various grips on reality. Like a ghost in a rain, a in a dark wind of Blackness from every side. It's like everybody, somebody always has to do something first, you know, and when they do that thing first, then nobody else has ever done it and the category doesn't exist. But if there weren't, if, if there wasn't somebody trying to put new things together, then nothing new would ever happen, you know, so it's like, to me, it's worth it. It, it is worth the, uh, the hassle of trying to figure out how to describe what I do. When I first started out, I was listening to, actually what made me first want to be a musician was Herb Alpert. I mean, you know, back in 1967 or something like that. I started playing trumpet when I was 11, and uh, by the time I was 12, I made up my mind that I was gonna be a musician. From then on out, I just went this total academic route, you know, school band, trumpet lessons, piano lessons, and I went into went to the university and started studying there. So it's like a, you know, real sort of by the book, academic music training. Did it help? Oh yeah. I mean, especially like what I'm doing now. Uh, you know, we'll go into the studio with a band of seven or eight jazz musicians and I can tell them exactly what I want them to do or I can write it out. I mean, it's a real basic thing. If I, if I didn't have that training, there'd be, I'd be, wouldn't be able to, you know, I wouldn't be able to write out the bass line and the piano part or whatever for people, so. Adventures in Failure, which is another sort of funky uh, monologue. That's like about this guy who is just a loser and he's just talking about his typical day in the neighborhood. He decides to skip work because he hates his job. Goes home and goes through his wife's purse and gets a couple of dollars out so he can go to McDonald's. Gets in his car and on the way there he sort of runs amok in the neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't know, you have to hear it. Something's gonna happen and it's probably not good. Open the door, grab my stuff and go. Just in time to watch the whole thing blow. The car goes with a bang and a hit. Oh boy, my wife is gonna really like this. I can't believe this is happening to me. This piece of junk is going back to the factory. It's a blatant attempt on my life. Everyone will fall for that except my wife. The way the plan begins to emerge. Overwhelming words to spend the night in the great outdoors. My suburban lifestyle has become a bore. I'm building a fire, finish my paper, wipe my white coat, no, don't hurt her. 
a legal scene of the unhappy event Resolve to make the most of my predicament A few yards away, I feel better I know, I write her a letter Better yet, a ransom demand Got your husband, send the money, understand? Or else we'll send his head home in a jar P.S. Sorry about the car Yeah, now that ought to really do the trick I'll be getting off the hook and she'll be worried sick But really, I'm gonna make it up to you, honey I'll buy a new car with your own damn money I'll walk, I'll walk into the sunset I'm mad, and he's 